Hi, uh, so in this video we're going to coat a piece of paper to make it uh, photosensitive and I'm going to talk a little bit about the paper that I'm using and about the um, chemistry. So first thing is we'll talk about the paper. Um, I've been using this paper which is Fabriano 90 pound um, cold press watercolor paper. This paper has um, a really nice tooth, which I don't know if you can sort of see there. There's little ridges, uh, very typical of watercolor paper. I used this particular paper um, pretty exclusively during my residency, and I really liked the surface. You could also use um, like the origami papers. You could use uh, Hanamula rag papers. Um, you can use the um, different kinds of printmakers papers, and I've had great results with all of them. But for today's demonstration, I'm gonna stick with my trusty tried and true um, Fabriano. Now, there's two chemicals that combine to make our photosensitive emulsion. The first one is our ferric oxalate, and um, this particular bottle is kind of yucky, so I'm just going to show you. The bottle that I have here on the right is the one that I'm going to use for a mo in a moment, and it's got a dropper in it. The other one is a newer bottle, just so that you can see the name of the chemical. The second one that we're going to use is the um, silver nitrate. So again, I've got two bottles here. Um, and one on the right here, here, uh, this side has the dropper and you can see I've used it uh, so it's gotten kind of stained. These are both from the Bostick and Sullivan kit that you can buy for making calotypes. Um, I found this chemistry to be super convenient. Um, it works out great. And what I'm going to do is in this shot glass, I'm going to mix equal amounts of each chemical. So I'm going to do um, 15 drops. I'm going to do the other one. It's important to count so that they are equal. Um, you will get uh, inconsistent results if you don't have the same number of each of the chemicals. So then I just kind of swish it around a teeny bit in this in the um, shot glass. And then the brush that I'm using um, is a brush that we've been using uh, in all the classes. This is a Low Coral Cornell Soft Comfort Wash Brush. I'll just kind of hold it up so that you can read the brush there. They actually, if you read up uh, about this process online, they don't recommend using a brush that has a metal piece here that's close to the bristles. Um, but I've been getting good results and I've just kept using this brush. So now I'm just going to dip the brush into the chemistry. I want to basically pick up as much uh, of the solution as I can. And then I'm going to uh, coat the paper. And the goal here is to coat the paper very, very evenly um, so that when I put my uh, negative on top of it, the exposure, um, uh, I'm not going to have any gaps. Um, it's going to all look good together. And this particular paper, um, I tend to really brush a lot. Um, I've been questioned, you know, is it really necessary to do that? There's so many different techniques and there are. Some people will actually pour this chemistry directly onto the paper um, and then they will uh, swish it around. Other people will use maybe a slightly different brush or a bigger brush and just um, deliberately like very, um, you know, like very hard into the paper, just sort of brush it all in. But what I found is that this particular paper does not hold the solution really great um, when I put it into the developer and the other baths. So I really spend some time working it in there. Uh, and I want to make sure that I'm coating every single piece. So I kind of go diagonally and I go, um, you know, lengthwise and crosswise. And uh, you'll get some interesting brush strokes sort of on the side. Uh, which is fine and I'm just sort of like moving in different directions to make sure that this is coating and uh, I'm gonna hold this up in just a second so that you can see what I'm doing here too and that should be good and so now I've got this piece of paper you can see it's buckling a little bit because it's wet um, I'm gonna just sort of show you the the sheen the idea is that when I look at it I want to make sure that there's no spots that don't have um, solution and um, even though there's little bits of bristle from the brush, uh, when I dry the paper, those are gonna come off um, and uh, it's not gonna be a problem at all. And I've got one piece here that is dried down just a bit. So you can see that it kind of dries to this darkish yellow color, which is great because it helps me confirm that I've got a good coating and um, you know this is not dry enough for me to print with. So I'm gonna dry it a little bit more with a blow dryer. I'm gonna skip making a video about the blow dryer because you won't hear me talking um, and I'll pick up again in a second when we're about to make the print. 